was out drinking, looking for the next thing. I couldn't really settle down. Always on the run, I didn't want to slow down. But baby, then you came around. Yeah, you came around. Trying to hold it together, trying not to cry. I was petting Charlie and I felt a massive lump in his throat. So it's really hard not to Google and not to, I don't know. All right, we're back in the van. Doors, um, but they took a sample of the lump and she said as soon as she poked it, pus drained. So it's an abscess. It's not cancer, which is a great thing. Um, she did go ahead and check his blood count. She said that looks consistent with an abscess so I took that to mean not normal but not a sign of cancer so we just spent $653 at the vet last week because he was due for his shots I got six months of preventative and Penny got some stuff for allergies and now I spent another 250 so um oh and I have to stick around another 10 days but my dog doesn't have cancer and ultimately that's what matters so I'll spend whatever I have to spend to make sure that life is good for them. Because I love them. Was your medicine good? So good? Chop licking good? Yeah! <laughs> okay. Real cute here. Real cute. I am getting ready to go to my doctor's appointment, which was the entire reason that I even came home to begin with. And then um, I have one more appointment in Paducah before I leave. I'm just very frustrated because I really wanted to be on the road. You know, I'm supposed to leave and go to Utah tomorrow. Now I'm not. I'm going to have to stay through at least next Monday, which would be the um, Monday before Thanksgiving. And then of course my family now wants me to stay through Thanksgiving since I'm going to be here that Monday. So I don't really know what I'm going to do, but sounds like I have plenty of time to figure it out. While waiting for Charlie's 10 days of antibiotics to pass, I had a lot of downtime. I went back and forth from staring at the dogs, making sure they both had their medicine, going for walks in the park, getting rid of the stock tires on the van, and what I'm most excited about, decorating the van for Christmas. I'm going to stuff my little pillowcases with just a couple towels. Hold up, I am on my way, I'm in motion, let's go to the ocean, yeah let's go outside. can hang out on the beach without freezing Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times We'll be chilling and having a good, good time Doesn't matter if the snow is falling Getting ready to go. Look at this face. <laughs> go to the vet. Today's day 10. So we're going for his checkup. The abscess has dissolved, which I feel good about. Now I'm just hoping that we're clear. But in other news, I have an ear infection. <laughs> so the earliest my doctor could get me in was tomorrow. I'm just, I just want everything to work out so I can leave. On Thanksgiving that's all I want I want healthy dogs if I'm mildly healthy that's fine I don't want to be perfect I want perfectly healthy dogs and a mildly healthy me Um, 
so it looks like pseudoarthrosis on spine was seen on x-ray. We'd like to refer to NSG to evaluate if source of pain. We'll need to send to couch or referral if no preference. So she's wanting to send you to neuro to make sure that this pseudo-arthrosis is not the source of your pain. Go I'll let her know. Bye. You love them. Bye. That sucks. Okay, so obviously I made it to Utah because the vi beginning of this video shows you that. And I feel like I needed to explain why I left when I was referred to two different specialists. Um, what's going on with my ears has been going on for a long time. I had a lot of issues with my ears when I was little. I had tubes in my ears three times and they've been great since I was 10, but it's, it doesn't hurt. It's not painful. It's just really annoying. And I can typically manage it with like Zyrtec or Allegra. So that to me is fine, whatever. My back issue has been going on for about a year and a half. And honestly, I just figured it was muscular. And I was really surprised to see that there was something on the x-ray. I don't fully understand it. Um, I've talked to a few different people who tried to explain things. But the main thing that went into making my decision to leave was that I asked my doctor if this was something I needed to take care of immediately. Um, kind of explained my situation and she told me if I know I'm going to be back in a few months, which I do, I'll be back in early May, um, then make my appointment for then and take care of it when I come back because it certainly isn't going to get any worse between now and then. So that is why I made the decision that I did. Had I stayed, they probably would have scheduled a lot more appointments and I would have been there even longer. So neither one of the things, although annoying my ear and painful my back, um, I feel like they can both be taken care of when I get back in May. We left my aunt's driveway a couple hours after eating Thanksgiving with my family. It was a rainy day to be driving, but I tried to take in the sights, knowing that I wouldn't be back for several months. We watched as Kentucky turned to Tennessee, we crossed the Mississippi, and Missouri turned into Arkansas. Growing up in this area, I know how risky it is to drive at night during this time of year, so rather than take my chances of hitting a deer, we pulled into my favorite spot and called it a night. Today is Thanksgiving, and well, it was. It's been a very long day. Finally being on the road, you know, I, this sounds so dumb, I know, but I feel like I haven't started van life yet because I spent the first three months in New England and I've already been there so many times. You know, I've been cooped up in Walmart parking lots and truck stops and Cracker Barrels and I am at a truck stop tonight and probably tomorrow night also, but I just know those days are so numbered because <clears throat> I'm going to be out west and I can finally park on BLM land. If you don't know what that is, it's Bureau of Land Management that we can all stay there. Most places it's up to 14 days and you just find a spot and park and it's free and I don't have to worry about campgrounds or any of that annoying stuff. So I feel like I'm finally starting van life and I'm just so excited. Um, which brings me to something so silly, but so special to me. This, this mug right here. My friend Caitlin, her mom makes beautiful pottery and Caitlin sells it at a local market outside of Nashville. So you should check them out. It's called Fenwick and Maple. But 
I picked this mug out from her mom's collections and Caitlin held it for me until I was able to get to Nashville and pick it up and I feel like it's just a van life mug. That is the dumbest, cringiest thing I've ever said, but I have not used it yet. I am waiting until I get to that first spot in the middle of the desert or the mountains or wherever I feel like this is it. And man, I'm cringy. Ooh, I need to just stop talking. All right, one of my favorite things about parking at Love's <clears throat> it's going inside in the morning to get their coffee. They have the best coffee. Do not underestimate the power of a Love's Truck Stop gas station coffee. We cannot fully appreciate Day two was spent coffee. going from Searcy, Arkansas to Oklahoma City. I spent most of the day listening to Matthew McConaughey narrate his autobiography and wondering how I didn't know he was a van lifer well into his acting career. I stepped out of the open door ship. Daryl welcomed him in. Larry confessed. He purged his sins. He told him how embarrassed he was and how he'd lost his way in the midst of all. We crossed into Oklahoma and called it a night early, once again at a Love's truck stop. I started to go a little stir crazy on day three. The weather was really nasty, and honestly, I couldn't see much of a landscape anyways. When I sat down to edit all this footage, it became very clear to me why my family hated taking me on road trips as a small child. I don't understand, like, route, 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 whatever, 66, supposed to go all across the country, but where are all the things? All I see right now is a big slew of mailboxes. I don't see anything cool. My eyes are dry. Chip and Joanna, I am. Cotton fields. Ah, uh, thirsty. I didn't think they would grow this much cotton in Texas. I wonder how many murder scenes I've crossed. Like how many Now the Dead Body Here podcasts that I've listened to. Probably a lot. The rain cleared as we were passing into New Mexico and the conversations I was having with myself seemed to do the same. We switched over to a 90s country sing-along and I watched the most beautiful sunset in my 42nd state. After a not so great night sleeping at the Cracker Barrel in Albuquerque, I ran a few errands in the city before hitting the road. The sun was actually shining and I was happy to be able to see everything around me. Since leaving Kentucky, I had watched the rolling green fields turn into plains, the endless plains turn into desolate deserts, and when I finally started to see Red Rock, I knew we were almost there. Something about finally getting here, after all the setbacks, made me very reflective. I always wanted a traditional life. I saw myself as a wife, a mom, someone who took the typical family pictures every fall and had a different door hanger for every month. And there's nothing wrong with wanting that, but that's not who I am now. People change. Dreams change. When I looked at the seclusion of this campsite, the first thought that ran through my head was how many people would ask me how this doesn't scare me, to sleep out here all alone. And then I got to thinking about the things that have scared me in the past. 
The one that stood out the most was not going to the college I really wanted to. I don't know how my life would be different if I had gone to that school. I might have different friends and probably different interests. I might have gotten married and spend my days now texting my friends about how much my husband annoys me. Who knows, I might be hanging the perfect Christmas wreath or wrapping presents for a couple of kids. But I know I wouldn't be sitting under the Utah stars reflecting on how great my life is right now and how happy I am. I've never been one to let fear win. I've always dreamt big. If your dreams aren't scary, dream bigger. Oh